Warning, this podcast contains ice cream. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the SCN on TV podcast for Gotham, Season 2, Episode 14, This Ball of Mud and Meanness. I'm your host, Dom. With me, my co-host, John. You said something about ice cream? Yeah. That was just... Okay, yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and my other co-host, Nikki. Hi. How's it going? Still rocking that Gotham cream. thug hat, huh? Yeah. yeah. Never gonna get rid of this. <laughs> Yeah, what what flavor was the ice cream? Do you guys, even, I I couldn't even tell. I don't know. It was so gray in the asylum. It was hard to tell if it was like vanilla or chocolate it, or something else. It was like dead smack in the middle. It was like some kind of grayish color. I like. Mm-hmm. I was intrigued. I wanted it. It was, it was brain matter. Big Ooh. freaking ball of it too. It was I, just. I thought it was mashed potatoes. So did I. If they didn't say anything about it being ice cream, I would have thought it was mashed potatoes. I'm going to venture a, a guess and say that stunt ice cream does not resemble real ice cream very much. Gotcha. Yeah, it was probably you plastic, know? to be honest. Know. We didn't see anybody <laughs> eating it, so I'm just going to assume it was plastic. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, but uh, Penguin's uh, therapy treatment. What do you, What do you guys think about that? ass backwards way to make him more aggressive I mean it was he was hallucinating his mother killing his mother you know whatever and then uh, Hugo Strange even mentioned the, something about matching the crane formula to their own so they're, they're working with uh, the scarecrow's formula hmm. the, yeah. the toxin that was going around last season which, I mean, makes sense considering the images that he was seeing. He was probably seeing one of his worst fears. Mm-hmm. That, you know, he was responsible for his mother's death. Right. So, in a controlled manner, I guess. But still, he, uh, <clears throat> he I, I guess Doctor Strange made it more, I don't know, Made it more perfect, made it more usable, and yeah. less, you know, murder frenzy. I mean, it seemed to reform Penguin. It didn't seem like he was acting, you know? He seemed very legit about it. If he was acting, it was fucking incredible acting by the Penguin there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I don't think he could pull off. No, and mind you, we're not talking about the actor. We're, we're actually talking about the character Penguin. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. yeah. Uh, so they released him, and uh, Hugo mentioned that he has plans for the Penguin, plans that don't even include the knowledge of Mrs. Peabody. Which yeah, she found really strange. She found well, it Hugo strange. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, she kind of like once he said that he wasn't you know, ready to reveal it to her. She's like, fine, I don't want to know then. Like, and She's like, I only know about all these strange things going on in the basement, but, you know, I can't know about this. You know, so that's saying something. That is <laughs> sure saying thing, something. Sir. All mm-hmm. the projects going on at Indian Hill. I think he's trying to revive Jerome down there, you know? Like, oh, yeah. You know, and yeah. if that's the case, Jerome may still end up being the Joker after all. Could be. It's a comic book show. Anything could happen, you know. Mm-hmm. Just because we watch somebody die doesn't mean they're dead. Except for Thomas and Martha. Rest in peace. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Bruce spends this episode trying to avenge his parents. He gets the gun from Selena, which was really shady. He just like strolls up in the middle of an alley. You know, they they're out in public. They're not in like. One of Selena's many, like, hiding places. They're not inside an abandoned warehouse, you know, anything. They're just out in the fucking alleyway of a street. Just, hey, here's a gun. A little weird. <sighs> Good judgment call by the 12-year-old's part. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let me tell you. 
I don't know. When I was 12 and I was trying to sneak things around, I definitely didn't do them out in the open. No. No. You know? And you were sneaking, like, you know, firecrackers and candy. <laughs> right. That's a gun. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. Uh, no, but then Bruce goes back to Alfred. They track down uh, this guy, Cupcake, who's supposed to know where uh, Matches is. And uh, we we meet Cupcake in the middle of uh, Fight Club. Basically, yeah. Yeah. It's a big, heavy set black man. With some Perfect nickname. Face tattoo you know i don't like mike tyson face tattoo going on yeah <laughs> and uh oof, he wants to fight alfred for for the information <laughs> i like how alfred tried to pass it off I was like i'm not a fighter <laughs> i love through the whole thing the like the talking and like the lesson he was teaching bruce as yes. he's fighting like <laughs> Instead of focusing on the fight, which if he did, he probably wouldn't have got his ass kicked as bad. No. Maybe not. I think that was also part of the lesson, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. <laughs> Proving that even Just... if you have the knowledge doesn't mean you're invo like you're invincible kind of thing. Right. Yeah. You're going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. Just try to know what you're doing so you don't get that hurt. Yeah, but still, he was all like, "Pip, pip, chitty, I'll stiff up my lip and all, and just beat the shit out of the guy." Like, I don't, <laughs> Alfred, you're you are truly the enigma of the show. Well, I thought Alfred was going down. I mean, he he looked like he was out. Yeah, the guy was sitting on top of him, had him pinned, and is just beating him in the face. Yeah, I thought yeah. he was done. It wasn't looking good. No. <laughs> You know, and, and he then came out on top. He and did. Then he, he fell right back down. He got the information. They said, "Go speak to Jerry." You know, whatever at so and so place, and then literally just dropped. <laughs> it was like it was like the, um, what do you call it? Like cartoon, like knockout, just free fall drop. Like doesn't you know use his hands? That's that's a really difficult fall to make without using your hands. Just saying. yeah. Like, even if yeah. you know you're landing on padding, like, if you have the opportunity to try something like that on, a, like, a trampoline or something, it's really hard to do without moving your hands to brace yourself. It takes a lot of training to do that. Yeah, yeah. So, it's it, it, I, I was super impressed. But, um, I don't know, rumor has it that uh, Fox has trademarked a uh, copyright claim for a TV series called uh, Pennyworth. So is it going to be, like, Alfred in his younger days? That's a suspicion, yeah. That's what I was thinking. But it could very well just be a spinoff of what's going on right now. If Bruce is out on the streets and Alfred's all alone, you know, in the, the mansion for a while, it could be Alfred looking for Bruce in, in Gotham. It's going to be, oh my god, he's going to have sick parties. <laughs> you know that Bruce is gone? Dude. You know, I, like I don't know, it, and it could be it could be some flashback stuff too. You know, involving some older days of of Alfred. It could just all take place in the past. You know, through flashbacks. Um, like, you know, kind of like uh, Marvel's doing with Agent Carter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, they could do a timepiece like that. Um, Which would be great. By yeah. The way. It would. So. And I think it'd be it'd be a good opportunity to see um, him and his buddy from the war together. Mm hmm. Uh, I forget his name now. Yeah, it's Robert. Been... Maybe? I don't know. Bobbert. Uh, Bobbert. Bob. The other <laughs> thought I, I was thinking of, like, what if it was about his daughter, Julia, who, you know, exists, but he is estranged from. That could be. You yeah. Know, like, or, or, like, their relationship, or, like, what caused them to... Yeah. You know, that could be pretty cool, too. Honestly, any one of those... I probably prefer present day more, um, with a, a touch of flashbacks. You know, like to to tell the story kind of the way like Arrow is doing. If you if you ever caught you know some episodes of Arrow where they he's got this time where he spent you know on an island whatever and 
when he was missing through all these years. And then you have present day, so he's going through and doing stuff, and then it's flashing back, and it's showing something from his past that compares to something in his present to to make up what's going on. I think that would be a cool format for Alfred just to give, you know, a little bit of everything to, to people, you know, so they get to see a lot of his history, a lot of the stuff that people are very curious about, but it's also kind of advancing a side story of what's going on currently, you know, because you can't completely get rid of Bruce and, and Alfred from Gotham, though. That's that's the big thing. No. Is you make a spin off of them, and you can't just have a story about Gotham that doesn't include Bruce. No, so, of course not. Um, so I think this is kind of the perfect time and, and place to do it, is have Bruce alone on the streets of Gotham. They can still work him into the episodes with Selina and everything, but there's no real need for Alfred at this point, if that's the case, you know. I mean, they could show him. It's fine, whatever. But what's he gonna do? Like hunt around for Bruce? That's something. That seems like a better TV series to me. You know, a spinoff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if it was um, like a short run thing, it wasn't like a continuous series. Like if it was just maybe like a six or eight episode little mini series, I think that'd be pretty cool too. Yeah. So I mean, this is kind of the age of spinoffs. Like every show is trying spinoffs. So. I mean, you see what happened to Arrow. Arrow's got two spinoffs now. You know, Flash and Legends of Tomorrow. You know, they all spawned from from that. And technically, you can include Supergirl in that because it's in the same sub series of universes. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So if Gotham's doing it. Like all the shows on the CW are doing it. You know, Supernatural tried to do it. Vampire Diaries has done it. Um. Even Pretty Little Liars tried doing tried their hand at a spinoff. You know, everybody's trying spinoffs. So, should be interesting. Um, I enjoy spinoffs, um, but that, that does put a lot more work on our plates. So, it does. <laughs> so that's that's my one concern. But maybe it'll end up being a web series. You know, it just says yeah. it says it's a live action. Uh, format. It doesn't say anything about television. It just says live action format. So, like something live cool. action comedy elements, you know, something like that. So, yeah, I, I feel like even web series would be perfect, you know? Yeah. So, anyway, uh, after the fight, Bruce gets uh, the information to go see Jerry, um, which is in this kind of club. And Jerry is the lead singer of some band. And the band is very Maniacs themed, like, we see them playing Jerome's police footage over the, the TV, you know, all kinds of footage, the, the lamps in the club are red that say ha-ha in them, mm-hmm. and uh, it's just, yeah, Bruce gets, like, ushered into her dressing room, she's got the Joker makeup on, you know, it's just like, what more could you ask for out of her? It's like, hey, look, Joker things. <laughs> I mean, she was a phenomenal character. I absolutely Absolutely. loved her. (laughs) The banter between her and Gordon was just great. Yeah, even even the the banter between her and Bruce was great. It was toned down between her and Bruce, though. Well, yeah. Because he's just a kid. Right, but still, like, you could tell, like, she wanted to talk to him, like, the way she talked to Gordon, but she, you know, she was holding back and. I think that kind of says something about her character, too. Yeah. And she's uh, sensitive to a child. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yet she still gives Bruce the information he wants. Despite Matches supposedly being her friend. Well, she said was. Was. They had a falling out. Mm. But also, I think, you know, being his friend at one point, she knows the position that Malone is in, or Matches, and uh, knows that, well... He wanted to do what he did. Yeah. But uh, Lee Silver and Chad is mentioning, you know, it was also a combo uh, between Harley Quinn and the Joker, and it definitely had Harley Quinn elements to, to her mm-hmm. as well. Like, the, the eyeshadow she was wearing was white and red, you know, and on top. It, it was really cool. I, I loved the, uh, that costume. I love that character. I hope we see more of her. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know, because then you had Gordon coming into the club and inadvertently tries to capture Bruce but ends up going crowd surfing. 
They're like square nerd, and then they just <laughs> crawl them into the pit. It's perfect. Well, they yelled something about the police. Yeah. And then they just busted out into this crazy song, and they just you know so. It, to me, almost seems like it was a, a a code word song. Like you know, people in the club knew what was going on. This was their plan yeah. to distract Gordon and let Bruce get out of there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, it's probably something where where a lot of like shady criminal deals and things go on in this club, and they have code words for stuff like this, and. That's why I'm thinking Gordon ripped her out of the club and arrested her. Sorry. My phone went nuts. Are you the Power Rangers? <laughs> I am. The Zordon? He's contacting you? He is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it was pretty funny because, like, I, I was like, Jesus Christ, Gordon, how the hell are you getting out of this one? And just somehow, miraculously, I guess he did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then arrested her. I was like, I wanted to see that. <laughs> I want to see you do it. Interesting. But yeah, getting her in in the um, uh, interrogation room. <laughs> so good. Yeah, I think that was my favorite scene this season. So far, anyway. Yeah, it's pretty close to it. Yeah, for me, anyways. She read him like a book, man. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And Your default state is anger. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, someone said that to him. Yeah. Oh, it was great, because Jim's been, like I said, Jim has, for me anyway, has no redeeming qualities on this show. Like, I I don't I don't like Gordon at all. Like, I'm hoping it'll get back to the point where I care about him. I did in season one, you know, but just lately, don't give a shit about Gordon, I'm sorry. Every other character on the show is more appealing to me than Gordon, including one-off characters that we meet for the first time. Even Nigma. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, Gordon's kind of on the Kristen Kringle case now, you mm-hmm. know, thanks to Lee, and you know, he's investigating, he's questioning Nigma. Like, can I? You mind if I see the letter that she gave you? And he's like, I, I didn't consider that a keepsake. Okay. So, so Nigma just like starts having these like flip out monologues. <laughs> Which is freaking ridiculous. I'm like, you're, you're talking door, really crazy. loud. You're really loud right now, Enigma. I know. He's trying to think, make me think I'm in a false sense of security. And he's going to make me think that I'm a fool. I'm not a fool. He's a fool. It's not like he's inner monologuing. He's definitely outer. <laughs> yeah. He's so paranoid. Mm-hmm. It's, it's pretty funny. Because I'm pretty sure Jim is... Not playing dumb. He legitimately has not paid much attention to this case yet. <laughs> no. He hasn't had the time. He's been preoccupied. He's got everything yeah. going on, you know, with Bruce right now. He's got everything going on with his uh, girlfriend. Mm-hmm. He just got out of the Mr. Freeze situation. It's like Jimbo. It's, he don't. He doesn't know anything. He, Leave no, him alone, Nick. Really doesn't. Leave him alone. You're freaking out for absolutely no reason. And he's going to get caught because he's so paranoid and then he acts without having to act. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, but when uh, when Gordon was talking to uh, Jerry and Jerry goes, "What? do you have the time? Bruce just like, <laughs> I mean, uh, Gordon just shows him the watch. and Shows Jerry the watch. Sorry. And uh, Jerry goes, oh, yeah, it's probably, you know, he's, he's there already. So, yeah, I'll give you the place. So she gives yeah. Gordon Match's address. In the meantime, we cut over to, to Bruce, and we see Bruce talking to Matches. All right. He knocks on the door. We get this whole story about how Matches actually wants to die. Bruce can't bring himself to kill him because he's not a monster. Um... Leaves the gun on the table, walks away, and matches, blows his own head off. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Do you guys think he's the killer? I don't know. He didn't, like... You would think a power couple like the the Waynes and killing them, mm-hmm. being contracted to kill them, you would remember that. Because, he... like, like Bruce said, they were all over the media. It's just... 
I don't think he would have forgotten that. Well, he definitely. Well, he said he doesn't look in the. He doesn't watch the news. He doesn't read the papers. So, that would be his excuse for for not remembering. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna point out real quick. I mentioned last week. Um, uh, where did I put this? I saved it. Mm, I can't find it now. Let me see. Um, oh. Yeah, this is the killer here. This is from season season one, episode one. This is the guy. Not even close. It doesn't look anything like him at all. Like I said, the guy's a shorter, rounder, like Joe Pesci type mm-hmm. guy. There's this, this guy was way too tall. He was way too thin. Hmm. See, the th- and this is the problem, is that we don't know if they just didn't have the actor who was going to be playing him in mind but when they shot the first episode or if it actually isn't him, you know? Because they were like, okay, we'll just cover him up and we'll figure it out later. You know what I mean? Mm. So, uh, it's it's hard to say. But at this point, it doesn't matter, I don't think. There's, um, there's kind of been this theory going around. There's a guy in episode two, Selena Kyle, um, that uh, Harvey stepped on this guy's shoes and he said, hey, watch the shoes. One of the big things going around um, in season one was the killer was wearing shiny shoes. That's the only detail Bruce really could remember. And then Selena had a sketch artist draw um, a picture. And we ended up with this photo here. And this is the guy that said, hey, clown, watch the shoes. So this guy looks very much like the guy. So yeah. he's wearing a, a purple suit, which kind of has Joker throwbacks. You know, the the whole face, everything, like the sketch meets it. It really kind of matches up with that guy's eyes, everything. So yeah. that's kind of the big internal fan theory right now. Um, we haven't seen or heard much of this guy since that episode. I think that was mm-hmm. the only one we saw, and he was just kind of hanging out in the precinct. We don't know what his deal was. Um, we haven't seen him again, as far as I know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like... I mean, now it's at the point, it's like, who did Selena see? Right. You know, was she, was she right, was she wrong? But like I said, it doesn't matter, because Bruce learns what he needed to learn from this man, regardless of whether or not he was the killer. Yeah. So... I mean that that door is seemingly closed now. Mm. You know he's he's learned that like it doesn't really matter why he did it or, or or who did it. It matters that you know he he learned that the city basically did this, and he learned that he is a product of his city as his his parents' killer, and his parents helped shape the city that he lives in that killed them. Mm-hmm. So they built that's, this. City. I mean that right on rock and roll mm-hmm. and a lot of money. Um, mm-hmm. I'm glad you picked up what I was putting down. Oh, of course. It's always smelling when you're stepping in. <laughs> um, if he didn't, I would have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was an easy one. But, um, yeah. You know, it gave Bruce the impetus to, like, I'm, you know, I need to learn about my city. I need to learn about what this place is really like. If I'm ever going to try to fix it, I, I know nothing about it. So. Right. It's it very quickly setting him on the path to be Batman, and I'm all yeah. Yeah, because I mean, he's like, oh, I'm gonna go live on the streets now. You know, mm. wrote a letter to Later. Alfred, signed it, hashtag Thug Life, and you know, peaced <laughs> out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say that. <laughs> oh my god. So you know, it's just you see Bruce like walking the streets. Somebody in a limo gets like driven up. You just see like their head get blown off in the middle of the limo, like as it's passing, and you know all kinds of uh, 
crazy crimes and stuff going on around him, and this this is what Bruce needs to to really see what the city is, and you know, instead of just hearing about it third hand, you know, and I don't know. He he need he needs to see it for himself. That's the only way he's gonna grow up to be Batman. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, he needs to learn those streets like the back of his hand. So, I mean, that's the only way he's gonna do it. It's just to live on them. Yeah. I think it's cute that her and uh, him, him and Selena are palling around. Now. Yeah, it's cute. But I don't know the way that um, Bruce made it seem like he's not gonna be hanging around with Selena the whole time. Well, yeah. I mean, he said he's gonna be living with her. But... Yeah. Well, he said. He said that she gave him a place to sleep. That doesn't mean that it's anywhere near her. Mm-hmm. Well, she's got a little house, a little, a little room. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Gordon found that place, so I, I feel like she yeah, wouldn't... she may have moved. Yeah, I feel like she wouldn't stick around and, and live somewhere that uh, Gordon knows where to find her. Mm-hmm. So. Mm, that's true. But I don't know. I, I I could see her wanting to keep a close eye on him regardless of whether he thinks he's alone or not. Mm-hmm. You know, she's probably going to be like, if she's not with him, she'll be watching him very closely because oh, yeah, she's definitely. like, you're a little too green to be out on your own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm she's sure she's going to give him a hand and stuff, but I don't think she's going to hold his hand either. No, no, I agree. I agree. So um they're not going to be attached to the hip they're not going to go everywhere together you know bruce is going to be alone for a bit of the time bruce is going to want to be alone for a bit of the time selena is going to want to be alone you know they're going to go do their own things so um i don't know it's going to be interesting how much they weave into you know the story because as much as bruce is gotham gotham the show isn't really bruce the Gotham is yeah. more about all the other characters. Like, it started off following Jim Gordon, and it's turned into following the Penguin. You know, like, we see more of the Penguin sometimes than we do of Jim. Yeah. I mean, this whole part of the series is called Rise of the Villains, so... Yeah. You know, there's reason for that, I guess, but... But no, you're right. I mean, this, this show is about the city, not Jim or Bruce, or it's just about you know, this living organism that is a city, I guess. Yep. And all its little white blood cells and red blood cells. And grimy viruses that look like penguins. Yep. So we're on we're on episode fourteen now. That's like seven ish more left for this season. Um and supposedly Fish Mooney's coming back this season. Mm-hmm. When when do you think they're gonna fit her in? Do you, like do you think it's gonna be the finale? Like <sighs> that would be an interesting finale. It would. You, you know, we haven't seen Butch in a while. No. Yeah. So maybe they'll start churning that. I have a feeling we're going to see a little bit. Butch next episode now that Penguin's out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. So, and Butch is. And also Martin Short. It looks like in the free, in the, from the previews. I don't mm. know. Really? I think that Martin was Martin Short. Short. I don't know. Wait, I gotta Google but his ass. That, no, Bruce, that wasn't him. Bruce went through, I mean, uh, Butch went through some kind of uh, therapy with, uh, um, what's his name? I can't think of it. The guy that just died. Matches? No. But, uh, tried to take over the city with his tigress girl. Gallivan? Gallivan. Yeah. Um, he just went over some shock therapy with that guy. So I have a feeling he's going to be the one to try to undo penguins. Yeah. Yeah, so. I can see that. <laughs> yeah. I um, mean, Lee oh, says Paul it's Ruben. Paul Rubens. So, yeah, Pee Wee Herman is going to be in the next episode. And from what I understand, he's going to be playing Penguin's father. Okay. Yes. That makes complete sense. I yeah. can see the resemblance. But it's like... Is he though? Is this part of Hugo's hallucination? Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I was before I go into the synopsis for next episode. Is anybody else upset that uh, the title of this episode, "This Ball of Mud and Meanness," there was no mention to Clayface? Me was. I was. I was expecting something out of Indian Hill, even though it's just a passing reference, you know. But there was nothing. 
Well, I get what they were actually talking about. They're talking about like you know, the foundation that is the city. Right. I get it. Okay. <sighs> God damn it. Mickey's like, who the hell is Clayface? I'm sorry. Uh, in due time. <laughs> It I'm sure. Was, I'm uh, sure this show's going to cover it okay. at some point. You want to know what Clayface is? You played a link to the past, right? No. Ah, damn it! All right, never mind. I had a good one. We'll get to that later. Okay. Yeah, we're we're gonna have to have a talk after this show. But before the few, few people who may be watching who do know what I'm talking about, remember in the desert there was those little sand dudes who would pop up out of the ground and go yee 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 yee. Yeah. And and grab at you. That's what Clayface looks like. Yeah. That's like the best way to think of it. Nikki, we're going to have to have a talk after this show. Um, the next episode is called Mad Gray Dawn. Um, Gordon and Bullock investigate a trail of clues left in a museum robbery, which, unbeknownst to them, were left by Nigma in a dangerous game of cat and mouse. Uh, Gordon's past comes back to haunt him when an anonymous person threatens to expose his hand in Galavan's murder. Meanwhile, Penguin's visit to some old friends leads him to meet his father, Elijah Van Dahl, guest star Paul Rubens. Uh, Bruce practices his street smarts in an all-new Wrath of the Villains, Mad Grey Dawn. So. Oh boy. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm very excited to see what Nygma's going to be up to next episode. I feel like that's going to be the highlight for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to start coming into his Riddlery self. I mean, we saw he, he drew the question mark, so... Mm -hmm. Tapping him, baby. The green question mark, too. The green one, yeah. Who has a green-colored pencil just lying around like that? And we know yeah. what kind of underwear he wears, <laughs> which is, you know... Thank Two you. things I didn't need to thank, know. thank you for putting terrible flashbacks back into my head. I'm glad I didn't notice that. Nigma bulge, Nigma bulge, Nigma bulge. John, where can the people find you? <laughs> you can find me at No More No More on Twitter, chanting things, I guess. <laughs> Tweeting out <laughs> pictures of Nigma's bulge. Uh, Nikki, where can the people find you? I'll do it. <laughs> on Twitter <laughs> at LadyVenom24. L A D Y V E N O M24. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm going to have to unfollow you. Uh, <laughs> you can find me down, <laughs> down below unfollowing no more no more at phenomenon. <laughs> P-H-E-N-O-M-E-D-O-M. -E -E He's going to tag me in it too. <laughs> <gasps> me? <laughs> I do that. Yes, yes you would. You can find us all and more on Facebook, Gmail, G+, Twitter, <laughs> and right here on YouTube at slash ASO TV Podcast for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows. Uh, till next week. Get hashtag, bulgy. <laughs> hashtag Bug Life. Wow. Bye. <laughs> oh, God.